All right, so there are definitely a couple of things that I strongly detest in life, and it's generally going to be feet, uh, pickles, and the HOA. All right, I hate the HOA. Why do they exist? Well, they, they exist for a couple of reasons. Uh, are they really that relevant, though? No, right? It's all because the tax dollars that you put into your general town, um, you know, they don't really want to build the streets. So why have public streets when you can privatize them and then the HOA is, you know, um, responsible for these streets and sidewalks and things, right? That's what the HOA is for. I mean, we can all act like it's, uh, you know, let's keep the house values up. Bro, listen, it is because your town and county is lazy and they don't want to build more public streets. All right. While they torment you over over nine dollars a month. <laughs> OK, it's in some HOAs, not in Florida, because, you know, Florida. But all right, let's get let's check it out. Um, Coming from the channel, uh, the fat electrician. This is it. This is a trifecta a video where I finally get to talk about the military while simultaneously bashing on Karens and HOAs all at the same time. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's the go. year is 2009. It's December, and it's been one of the craziest years in recent history. Barack okay. Obama has just been inaugurated president. The record for the highest grossing movie of all time has just been shattered by Avatar. The number one song of the year is the Black Eyed Peas' Boom Boom Pow. Michael okay. Jackson, the king of pop, has passed away, and Kanye West is now famous for interrupting Taylor Swift during the VMAs. And on top <laughs> of all of that, it's been one of the worst economic... Oh, I'm old. I remember all of that. You probably do too if you're here. Economic years for America since the Great Depression, with unemployment peaking at 10% and the housing market down 30%. And despite all the craziness going on in the world, in Richmond, Virginia, a 90-year-old man still takes time out of his day to walk out of his house every morning and hoist the American flag on the 21-foot flagpole in his front yard. Later that morning, he would walk right past Marka. that flagpole on his way to the mailbox to get the mail. And in the mail that day, he would receive a letter from a high-powered law firm informing him that he was hereby ordered to remove that flagpole and never fly the American flag in his front yard again. In America? Due to, and I quote, aesthetic reasons relating to curb appeal. And I know what you're thinking. How on earth can you order somebody in America to not fly the American the flag in their own front yard? Well, unfortunately, this gentleman lived in an HOA, a homeowners association, right. which if you don't know is basically diet communism. It's where a bunch of people build some nice houses then they get together and they're like, hey, we got all these nice houses. You know what we need? More government. We've got federal, <laughs> state, county, municipal. It's not enough. We need even more rules. We should come together, designate a tribunal of elder Karens to make all the important decisions for us. You know, like whether or not I'm allowed to park my truck in front of my house overnight. What? Oh, you better not have three vehicles. Uh oh, right. You better not have them. One better be in the garage at all times. You can't have three. You can't have three vehicles in your parking lot, in your driveway, and better not and on the street. Oh, no. Oh, no. Make sure your grass is cut to a certain level, right? Remember the house you saved up for the down payment, right? I can't change the color. Come on, bro. Colored flowers I'm allowed to grow in my garden and what color I'm allowed to paint my house, you know, to protect our property value. But it is on this day that the Tribunal of Karens in charge of the Sussex Square HOA in Richmond, Virginia are about to find out the hard way that they have picked a fight with the wrong guy because this is not just any old man. This is retired Army Colonel Van T. Barfoot a combat veteran with 35 years of service and the recipient of a Silver Star, a Bronze Star, two Army Air Medals, okay. the Legion of Merit, right. three Purple Hearts, and the Congressional three. Medal of Honor. Born in 1919, Van would grow up in Mississippi during the Great Depression as a one-quarter Choctaw Native American farm kid. Then in 1940, at the age of 21, he would volunteer to join the U.S. Army. He would achieve the rank of Sergeant by 1941, and mm. then Pearl Harbor would happen. In 1940, the United States Army had 269,000 soldiers and by the end of 1941, it had 1.4 million. And with now Sergeant Barfoot being a non-commissioned officer in a leadership role, he is one of the few people that America and the world would turn to to train and lead all these new recruits into the largest war the world has ever seen. And that is exactly what Sergeant Barfoot did, leading his men through three amphibious landings at Sicily, Salerno, and Anzio before his entire unit would begin fighting their way inland through Italy. Then at the small town of Carano, Italy, Barfoot and his entire company would be stopped in their tracks. In order to to advance further inland, they were going to have to go through the mountains. But in those mountains, the Germans had established fortified fighting positions, and there was seemingly no way through. Over the course of the next several weeks, Barfoot would lead his squad through scouting missions, trying to find any possible way through the German defenses, but there were none. Every single possible pass through the mountains, 
Germans had laid down a minefield, covered that minefield with fortified machine gun positions, and on top of that, they obviously had the high ground. After being halted for over a month, the order would finally come down that Barfoot's company is to just attack run face first into the German defenses and try to fight their way through it. Now, if you watched last week's video, you know that trying to fight fortified machine gun it positions nasty. with the high ground is an absolutely terrible idea. If you didn't, there's this guy, Jake McNasty McNeese. Him and 34 men successfully beat 700 Germans in a firefight because- it, I mean, that, that was mandatory. They had fortified machine gun nests and the high ground. And this time around, the Germans have that plus a minefield. This is borderline a death sentence for Van's entire company and everybody knows it. Now, Sergeant Barfoot believed that leaders should lead from the front and be willing to die for their men if necessary, which is the politically correct way of me telling you that Barfoot's about to do some yeah. gangster shit. He yeah, goes yeah. to the company commander and is like, hey, we're all gonna die anyways. Let me go out there with just me and my squad. We'll try to traverse the minefield, get in there, take out all the machine gun positions just by ourselves. Company commander's like, I mean, we're all gonna die anyways. Why not throw a Hail Mary, give you a shot? So that's exactly what they do. Barfoot takes off like a bat out of hell, leading from the front, not checking to see how far behind his men are. He then makes it all the way through the minefield, jumps into the ditch, looks behind him. His men haven't made it yet. Doesn't matter. Gotta keep pressing forward. He gets to the first enemy machine gun emplacement, throws a grenade in there, blows up, bang, goes in to check, just anatomical confetti everywhere. Nobody Ooh. survived. None of his right. squad mates have made it yet, but he hasn't heard a mine blow up in the background, so they must be okay. They're just yeah. being overly cautious. Absolutely. He advances to the second machine gun emplacement. Rushes in, kills two Germans, the other ones surrender. At this point, Barfoot's squad catches up with them. Apparently, two of them have gotten hurt while traversing that minefield, at which point Barfoot's kind of just like, fine, whatever, just stay with the prisoners, I'll take care of it. Just complete dad energy of like, hold the flashlight and stay out of the way, I'm working. He advances to the- Bro, wait, hold on. Okay, all right, all right. So basically, they denied this man, this man, the one that we're talking about right currently, to fly his flag? Oh, bro. <laughs> uh, this this is terrible. All right. I think specifically people, no, everyone should be able to, bro. We're, we're in the United States of America. I think we're we should be allowed to fly our flag. I'm not sure that the that the American flag drops <laughs> drops the property value, bro. You're in America. All right. The third enemy machine gun position completely by himself. Bear in mind, these Germans heard a grenade, a bunch of submachine gun fire, Germans screaming, and now there's just boss music playing and it's getting louder as Van gets closer and closer. Van turns the corner, the Germans are like this, I quit, I surrender, I give up, you win. <laughs> At this point, Sergeant Barfoot has effectively saved the day. His entire company now does not have to <laughs> bum rush a minefield and a bunch of fortified enemy machine gun positions. Hooray. So Sergeant Barfoot changes gears, hops into the old leadership role. He starts consolidating everything, figuring out how many POWs he has, whatnot. And then a couple minutes later, the Germans launch a counterattack and three German tanks come rolling down the road directly towards them. At this point, Barfoot continues to dead. I think that exact footage was used in the 1970s movie, uh, Patton. Three German tanks come rolling down the road directly towards them. At this point, Barfoot continues to dead the entire situation. Just like, give me the bazooka, stay in the trench. I got this. Gets out walks out in front of these tanks, wide open, no cover, no concealment, nothing. Just standing out there like it's Tiananmen Square with a bazooka, shoots at the <laughs> first tank, knocks it out. The other two tanks are just kind of like, right. I mean, it's one crazy American with a bazooka standing in the open. Hey, that's enough. All right, that is absolutely enough. This is for sure a trap, right? So they turn around and retreat. Now, just so we're all on the same page, this man has sprinted through a minefield, cleared yeah. three German machine gun nests, right. killed eight Germans, captured right. 17 more, and all to be told he can't fly his American flag. Knocked out a tank in the span of like 45 minutes. And he's like, I can do more. So he advances further into enemy held territory, by himself, finds a German artillery emplacement, proceeds to blow that up too, and then he's like, okay, that's probably enough for today, and he goes back to his men. He then proceeds to get his men and all of the POWs back to the company, and he himself personally carries his two wounded men back 1,700 yards. And that's it, that's the end of the story. That was like Tuesday to this guy, and he just goes on fighting through the rest of World War II like it was right. nothing. 
couple right. months down the road, his entire unit's in France. The commander walks up to him and is like, congratulations, you're receiving the Medal of Honor. At which point, Barfoot requests that he receives it in the field in front of his men. He didn't want to wait till they got home and had a ceremony. He didn't want it in front of friends or family or Congress people. None of that. He wanted it in front of the men that nominated him to get it right. because that's what meant the most to yeah, him. That's he didn't the most really important. care about the medal itself. He cared that the men that he was tasked with saw that he got honor. Thought so highly of them. Yeah that he thought he deserved that medal, and that's why he requested that he receive it in front of them. He would go on to make it through the war in one piece and return home as a Medal of Honor recipient and war hero. At this point, Lieutenant Barfoot then goes on to serve throughout the entire Korean War. Seeing it through to its completion, he has now served 20 years in the military, and it's time to retire, is what most people would say. But Barfoot, on the other hand, is like, I just need to do something new, something exciting, maybe a little bit easier on my knees. This whole light infantry thing isn't as light as I heard it was. I wanna go ahead and be a helicopter pilot. So he goes to Army Aviation School as a major and at the age of 40, ends up being one of the top <laughs> helicopter pilots the Army has, and then he goes on to serve in Vietnam as a helicopter pilot. This man was a superhero, guys. Okay, if you don't know, during Vietnam, like most dangerous jobs, tunnel rat, helicopter pilot, door gunner, hands down, not even a question, serves throughout the entire Vietnam War, comes back home, finally retires after 35 years in service and achieving the rank of colonel. He then goes on to finish out the rest of his working life as a military contractor. Now, military contractor, that could mean anything. He could be serving food at the chow hall. He could be sitting in an office giving people advice, writing manuals. He could be doing some extracurricular gangster shit. We really could have be. no idea. How I mean, based off of everything you just said, it, it was not cooking. He was not in the chow hall, bro. However, I will point out it's a little bit odd that some dude from Mississippi decided to put his roots down in Richmond, Virginia, which is like, I don't know, an hour away from CIA headquarters. Like, I, you, you, you I mean, do what you want with that information, right. I guess. <laughs> then after a career of doing some extra well played extracurricular gangster shit i mean contracting he would go on retire and live happily ever after until one day in december of 2009 when at 90 years old he would open a letter informing him he was not allowed to fly the american flag in his own front yard which bear in mind literal nazis with machine guns couldn't stop him from flying the american flag in germany in the 1940s and now right. you're going to try to tell him he can't do it in virginia in his own front yard yeah it's not it's happening a bold strategy right. so the next day colonel barfoot's son-in-law calls up the local radio show they run with the story it gets picked up nationally almost immediately everybody of, from the of course it would white house I mean, press secretary to fox news fighting, to the local vfw fighting. is absolutely furious okay stop at this point in time, it's 2009, Barack Obama's president. Do you understand what I've just told you? This HOA is up so bad that they've got the Obama administration and Fox News to agree on something, okay? This is a critical error on their- Okay, okay yeah, because listen, yeah, you're right. That doesn't make any sense. Part. The HOA would end up backing down within a week because apparently when the entire nation is looking at you like the eye of Sauron, it ends up being bad for the aesthetics and curb appeal of your little neighborhood. Mm. And then the law firm that wrote the letter in the first place has since renamed and rebranded their entire law firm. <laughs> and it's been signed into Virginia state law that no HOA can tell anybody to not fly the American flag right. on their property. That's Colonel Barfoot crazy. proving victorious yet again would then go on to fly the American flag in his front yard every single day for the next next two years until passing away in his home at the age of 92. And as of March 2023, Fort Pickett in Virginia has since been renamed to Fort Barfoot in his honor. So in conclusion, whether it's a little old man at the restaurant eating chills, ice cream for guys. dessert, your friendly neighborhood mailman, or just some elderly gentleman trying to fly the American flag in his front yard, try to be nice to everybody because you really, really might not right. know who you're with. Thanks yeah. for watching. Best way to support the video is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang. Out. I feel perfect. Guys, I think that was probably the best example of you guys. You never know, right? You never know who your neighbor is. Like, be careful out there. Uh, I'm honestly not surprised that some people, based off the, uh, the current climate we're in, um, you know, they may say, I don't really like the fact that you, you have the American flag. But, bro, we're in America right now. You're not going to tell me for having my flag. Guys, I was yelled at recently. Right by someone in the comments I was like, "Why do you have the American flag in the back, bro? I, mm, I'm American. <laughs> why would I not? That's crazy, bro. What does that even mean? Why is why do people get so offended at the flag of our country? It's the flag of our country. There's sick people everywhere. I'll tell you that. But all right, listen, you guys all have an absolutely amazing day.
Enjoy your day thoroughly. Best, before we go, are you guys subscribed to the other channels? Logical Movie Reviews with Mr. L. Boyd along with Mr. L. Boyd Music. Both are found in the description. Check it out. Mm -hmm.